Hi, I'm JD, and what we're going to be doing today is this integral. It's sine raised to the 6x cosine to the 5th x dx. See if you can try to do this one on your own. Alright, sometimes with trig functions what you have to do is some form of substitution or manipulation using the rules. So what you want to do is do some observation. There are certain rules when you have sine and cosine and some others. You have 6 here and a 5 here. Now what you're going to do is you're going to split this apart. So sine 6x cosine to the fourth x times cosine x dx. If you get it in a way so that you have sine raised to a certain power times cosine x dx, then you can just simply apply the power rule because it will be in this form. It will be in the integral u raised to some number n du. If you have it in that form, right, power rule, that will give you u raised to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c, the constant. So if we can do that, then we can just simply take the integral. So we're just going to take this, and what we're going to be doing is using a trig identity. You have, I'm just going to write it here and I'll erase it. You have sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. That's a trig identity that you learned from trig. Now I'm going to take that, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to solve for cosine squared. Once I do that, it's just in terms of 1 and cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. So this right here can be rewritten as cosine squared raised to the second power. Then I can simply take this and substitute it with this. So then I have 1 minus sine squared x parentheses squared sine squared sine 3 to 6 cosine x dx. this. Alright, now it's a matter of foiling. Now, this right here, if you end up foiling, it's also what's called a perfect square. A perfect square is where you double this, sorry, not double, um, square it, so it's 1 squared, which is just 1. Take these two, you multiply them together, and then you multiply it by 2, so it's a negative 2 sine squared x. Last one is going to be this squared, so it will be plus sine to the fourth x. Six on the front, cosine x dx on the back. All right, what you're going to do now is simply distribute. You're going to distribute this and this whole thing to each of those terms. So you have the integral of sine 6 x cosine x dx minus the integral. It's going to be, I'm going to put that 2 in front 
So you can kind of ignore the constant. That would be sine, it's 6, and then a 2, so it would be sine raised to the 8x cosine x dx. Now I'm kind of out of room. But it would be uh, plus sine to the 10th x cosine x dx. So let me erase this. Let me erase this. We're going to be applying the power rule in a sec. And then uh, this is just this. So I'm just going to erase this. And so let me rewrite this and so you can see what's going on. So you have the integral of sine 6x cosine x dx minus 2, this thing, the integral of sine x or sine to the 8x cosine x dx plus the integral of sine 10x cosine x dx. I just rewrote it. All right, and then you just simply apply the power rule. So the power rule, you know, this, remember what I had up here? It's just u to the n du. u is sine x. The derivative of sine x is cosine x dx. So, just apply the power rule. So it's sine to the seventh x over 7. You have that minus 2. So that's sine to the ninth x over 9. You would simplify it if you can. Here you can't, so you don't have to worry about it. Plus sine to the 11th x over 11. All right, and am I forgetting anything else? Yes, it's an indefinite integral, so when you have an indefinite integral, it's always plus the constant. All right, that's it.